This is QCC alum David Russell along with Joe Massey. The Queensboro Tigers about to host the Hostos Caymans. Queensboro looking to snap a six-game losing streak, including three in the CUNY. Gotten Hostos. a little loud in here, David. Yeah, I know. Hostos two and two in the CUNY. Starting five for the Caymans, Malvin Nieves, Jonathan Loria, Daryl William, Shelby Rose, and Jesse Okigu. Starting five for Queensboro, wearing their white jerseys, Jerome Hodges, Brandon Seeger, Stephen Bruton, Tyler Hodges, and Shea Fullerton. Well, uh, the Hostos guards are really good, Dave, and uh, they're going to be a test for the Tigers tonight. By the way, the Tigers do have Tigers on their uniform this year, not Queensboro. It says Tigers right on the front. For you fashion conscious out there, and I know there are plenty of you. <laughs> Got to get the game started well here. There's a foul on Tyler Hodges. They went right inside. Well, that's one of the guards who has great penetrating ability, a little size, as you can see. And Fullerton, uh, the biggest tiger I could remember seeing in uh, a long time. Maybe since Leo, what do you say? Esonwe? Yes. Front rim, that one. That one is good, and it's one nothing. Bruton. That was Melvin Nieves. He averages 15 a game. The other guard averages 20 a game. Seeger, three, no good. Chased down by Jerome Hodges. Here's Jerome Hodges to the basket, no good. Fullerton the rebound, putting it on the floor, strong and in. Fullerton makes it 2-1 Queensboro. Very strong move right there. That is something we have not seen the Tigers do very much over the past two years. And Sager gets the hand in to break it I up. I like that. I, Record-wise, they haven't done well, but I could attest to the fact this is a better assortment of Tigers this year. Three-pointer is no good, but there's a board. And that's no good, Nieves missed. Attempt and got it, William. Nice move by Darrell William, but he couldn't finish. And that shot is missed by Rose, so Hostos just missed three right at the rim. And William hits the floor, and the crowd loves it, but Queensboro turns it over. Got a play under control, even under this they got a lot of fans behind you tonight, but you have to play under control. Crowd really into this one early. Loria being guarded by Bruton. Loria jumper. There were three Tigers there, and he hits anyway. And it's 3-2 Hostos. Nice shot. Looked like a veteran guard play on that. Hey, it hasn't been this loud at a Tiger game since you and I were down at uh, BMCC for the... Uh, Tigers against uh, Hostos. Hostos. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, about four years ago. What a move by Loria, but he had the shot blocked. It goes out of bounds, but we'll stay with the Caymans. That was three years ago down there at BMCC, and the Tigers pulled the upset of upsets. You tell there's more energy in the building than yeah, there's been yeah, yeah. You know, for a few years already. That was a great game that night, Dave. I always remember that game because I was telling you, I said, this one has like the Division I feel to it with the crowd into it. And, and Carl Benjamin's we, we three in overtime and, that yeah. rattled around and in. We were watching it from upstairs in the stands with great view. Three in the corner from Loria, no good, and rebounded by Fullerton. And that pass is intercepted. Up ahead, Rose is fouled and will go to the line for two. We have one of the great all-time coaches in the crowd tonight, uh, over to our right, Ray Amelbert. 
No. <laughs> we have uh, the fella from Baruch, Ray Rankus. And Ray, uh, I've known him for years, and we've always gone back and forth like that. But uh, I think he would like this kid, Laurie, on his team, the way he played these last two times up. Rose splits the free throws. 4-2 Caymans. Rose almost averaging a double-double, 10 points, low over 10 points and nine rebounds per game. A deep three, no good and rebounded by Gloria. I don't know where Amobert is. He's probably down in Florida. I hope he's, uh, hope he's well. I haven't talked to him in a while. William is Nieves. Nieves going to the basket, up and under, no good. Fullerton up ahead to Bruton, who got behind the defense, and Bruton throws it down. Well, uh, we know Stephen Bruton can do that, uh, and he waits for the opportunity, and really soups up the people. So we're tied at four, a little over three minutes in. And the athletic director making a little announcement, but you know he loves the you fan so participation. We have to make sure there's not a court storm. You know something. he loves the fan participation to begin with, but you always you have to keep the young people in check, you know. So let's go on with the game here. Okigu, Nieves, good ball denial inside. We go inside, got Fullerton in the air, but he still contested the shot. And Okigu couldn't put it in. Tried to go the other side of the basket on that. Bruton for three, no good. Tipped around. And Tyler Hodges gets it, Bruton another three. It's good. Bruton from downtown. 7-4 Queensboro. Oh, well, you know, Bruton could shoot that three. That's no mirage there. Nieves step back three. Short and rebounded by Tyler Hodges. Root in the corner three, no good. Steve Bruton, I want to see him do well this year. He's one of the nicest young men I've met here. And there's a mismatch off the switch. Hokigu with the Edward Vu guarding him, and that was an easy two points. Nice go and give. Low to Bruton. Seeger to Low. Low for three, no good. And, and they may say over the back. Over There's the back on the rebound, but as you can see, the Tigers can stretch you out this year. A Lou can shoot that outside shot. Bruton can shoot that outside shot. And they get a good look at it when they shoot it, especially with Bruton. Because Bruton is about, what is he, about six foot four? He's tall. Bigger. Rose. Fake work going to the basket, and it's good. 8 7 Hostos. Strong. He faked move. the shot, then he went inside. He faked the pass to the outside and put it in. Bruton. Throwing it inside. Nice pass and Tyler Hodges finishes, 9-8 Queensboro. Tell you, Hodges is a ball player and I saw that here on alumni day, right from the get-go. Loria to the basket and he puts it in off glass. Team's going back and forth in the first six minutes. It's 10-9 Caymans. Lou, side Bruton, another three. No good. 
And swooping in for the offensive rebound is Seeger. Lou going inside. No good. Hodges, Seeger, excuse me. Counted and the foul. Brandon Seeger. We have really exciting basketball early on here. Queensboro's had some close games. They lost at Suffolk by seven, at Kingsborough by seven. Had I mean, some not so close to 16 at LaGuardia, 28 against Sullivan. And what uh, assistant coach Simpson told me is they need to learn how to win these tough games that they get in. And they have been in a couple of real tough ones with Kingsboro most recently. And they beat Bergen in double overtime yeah. early in the year. So you get a couple of those wins and then your record doesn't look so bad. That's how it works. Some subs in for Hostos. Here's Shelby Rose. And a foul on the floor before the shot. If it's on Fullerton, it'll be his second. Boy, this Laurie is a solid guard, a, a, a solid ball handler anyway, the way he gets in the lane. They actually play Hostos like they have four guards on the court. And, and then is. he dished that ball to Rose, and there was the foul committed, as you said. Fullerton to the bench with the two fouls, so we'll see how Queensboro can adjust. <laughs> Trying to go inside. Uh, a little too fancy with the dribbling. They still have 16 on the shot clock. Grant. Ramovic going to the basket. Nice pass to Rose, but they get him for a charge. Offensive foul as he made another terrific pass off that move, but made the move too strong into the Tiger player. Tell you, Hostos played some exciting games. They lost, like this score, they lost at Bronx 120 to 109, and then they beat Kingsborough 105 97. And they beat Manhattan also. Yeah, 94 87. They're, they're used to the uh, the exciting up and down, back and forth games. Alex Franklin with the basket. Obviously, they give up a lot of points. <laughs> there, there's not a premium on defense, obviously. They got Loria. Had it stripped, but a foul called against Queensboro. Well, look at the way that kid handles the ball beautifully. He can fake it, he can up fake it, he can go to either hand. He's really tough to guard. Gloria at the line for two. Foul is on Alex Franklin, his first. First one is good. Oh, it's 14-11, Dave. Gloria makes both, and it's 14-12, and Gloria has six. Well, you kind of got the idea he was going to be a good free throw shooter. Bruton to Paul. McDonald. Nice dribbling by McDonald, but then he lost the handle. There's a near turnover, but they say Paul touched it last. Very spirited game to this point. Rose going to the basket and a foul on the floor before the shot. He got bumped along the baseline making that move in there. Good play by Queensboro early on. If there's one issue, that was their sixth foul. First on Daquan Miller. So Hostos will be going to the line from this point on. Gloria. Deep three in front of the Queensboro bench is good. And Hostos goes up 15-14. 12 minutes to go in the first half. Very exciting first half. Paul up ahead to McDonald. 
McDonald, nice pass. The defense Franklin puts it in. And the Tigers take the lead. Way to go by Franklin, staying heads up, getting in there, picking off that loose ball. Grant making his move, kick out, Ramovic at three, no good. Out of bounds, and the ball goes to Queensboro. Pass was tipped and turned over. Three-pointer in the corner is good. It's Jordan Morgan. 18-16, Caymans. There's a near turnover. William got the hand in. I had to talk with uh, Marquise Poole, the coach of Hostos before, and he thinks uh, his team is either like around the third best team in the conference right now. Last year, they were number one in the CUNY, but they could not participate in the tournament because they would have had too many games played, and that would have uh, nullified them from playing in the regionals. Oops. Shot is no good. Hostos the other way. So those regionals, David, are very important to these teams. Yeah. And they played LaGuardia in the regionals, and they lost by one point to LaGuardia. Gloria for three, and it's good. <laughs> Doing his Steph Curry impression. 21-16. And a double dribble. Queensboro a little flustered by the Hostos pressure. And we have a timeout called. 10.30 to go in the first half. Caymans by five. Very exciting first half. Well, the exceptional player on the court to this point has been Mr. Loria. Made several fine passes. He stepped up. He's hit the outside shot. He's hit the three. And he just basically looks like a fellow who knows how to play ball really well. But Queensboro uh, now down by five. They've got to get back on their game. And they have a lot of numbers, David. So they have to get everybody involved. More, more good players on this team than there have been for several seasons. Everybody basically gets on the court for Queensboro. Can he add something when he gets in there? Remember last year was tough. They went two and 22. Both wins were against Duchess. And last year they got McDonald, for instance, and we were touting McDonald as a top player. I don't even think McDonald's a top player this year. I think it's a conglomerate of guys now. You got, uh, you get fight for playing time. That's good. It was my last year, the second half kind of felt tough after they lost James Wells. So this team might be one in six, but they they look leaps and bounds ahead of where oh, they this were. Is a, this, uh, this is a uh, tiger of, uh, different, with different stripes. <laughs> now we have to see about stopping Jonathan Loria. You get the, that one guy who could be LaGuardia when they won 101-85. There was one player well, who had 43 for them. As you can see here, McDonald, uh, just after you said that, said, I've got Laurie, and he's pointing it out. And somebody's got a stick on this guy here. They might end up switching off a few guys. And if, and if it comes down like to it, you got to put a little extra attention on him. Saved in by Paul. And then a foul. That's one thing, Hostos is not a defense worrying team first. They want to get up court and attack. That is their game. McDonald outside to Paul. Around Sager at three, no good. And rebounded by Morgan. Up ahead, Loria. Spin move, shot, no good. Loose ball, picked up by Sager. 
Going all the way to the basket and it's good. 21-18. Well, that last move by Loria, you could say, was a little out of control, but I'll tell you what, a lot of guys can't make that move either, but the Tigers took advantage. And then Okigu answers back. 23-18. William, a foul on the backcourt. Nieves reaching in to try to grab the ball away, or number 11 it was. Well, Daryl William. Williams. And Paul made sure not to step on the line. Seeger, John Paul, making the move on William. Floater is good. John Paul, 23-20. Romovic back the other way, no good, but it's tipped in. Jordan Morgan, and it's 25-20. What are you gonna call? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna call a step forward. Twenty-five twenty, Hostos. A lot of good offense in this game. This is one of the most entertaining games we've seen in a while. Absolutely. You know, this junior college has been dotted with uh, over the years. Terrific offensive teams. I don't, can't tell you how many good Kingsborough teams we saw. The son Duncombs. Uh, and he's Kingsborough even talking Wave. to the, uh, the, the women's coach, who was then the men's coach about it <laughs> uh, for Hostos before the game. And he was saying, yeah, I mean, I ran into some of those teams. They're down to one on the shot clock. William throws it up. No good, but tipped and kept alive. But then Queensboro takes it away. Nice pass, Paul had the shot blocked. End to end action right now. Pull up three, deep three, no good. Not a great shot, rebounded by McDonald. The tipped, Paul gets it back. Can you say walk the ball up? No. Corner three, left alone, and it's good. Khalil Johnson from downtown. 25-23. William, and pass is picked off. Seeger going all the way, and he throws it down. We're tied at 25. What would you say the odds are that he was gonna throw that down there? <laughs> Timeout, Hostos. 7.16 to go in the first. Queensboro not playing like a one in six team. They're not. I believe me, they're not a one in six team. How good they are is yet to be seen, but they're not a one in six team. I mean, I, I have to say that. Not but from you the know, looks of this. Not offensively. And, and, and this isn't a bad Hostos team either. Not offensively anyway. Can they eke out those final seconds in the game? That we'll see. But this one is very competitive and I think it will stay competitive. You just put the kiss of death on them. Oh. Not at all, because it's been a while since we've been able to say that about a men's squad here. And when they can high fly like that, make some plays, stay in control, it's a pleasure to watch. Well, this is fun. I'm trying to think of the best games we did together. That one down at BMCC we always bring up. And the first LaGuardia-Queensboro game here I thought was up there. Oh. Well, the first 12 uh, minutes and 45 seconds of this are up there. Yeah. And there's a turnover. Seeger will lay it in this time. And Queensboro leads 27-25. Seeger can get up in the air also and uh, a good athlete. Loria may have gotten away with the push off, but he misses anyway. But Hostos will keep it. 
You see now, they uh, basically made it a little tougher, tougher for Loria by taking the pacing in the game a little faster, and they've taken him out of it a little bit. Nieves going to the basket, and then a kick out. Okigu, no good, and rebounded by Bruton. Pushing it, Johnson. Back out, Bruton for three. Got it! 30-25, Queensboro. He can be very good when he gets it going. Take out Loria trying to answer back and does. He can be very good oh. too. Loria with 15. 30 28. I'll tell you, when you do what Bruton did, that's a game changer there. Tyler Hodges. No good, tipped out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Tigers. When you do what they did, they got the ball to Bruton, they hit that big three, crowd comes alive. That gets everything going in this building, and that's very important. And then Loria coming back and answering with the three of his own. And he silences them, but yeah. you got to keep making plays, Dave. Paul puts up a three. Short, but saved in. But saved into the Caymans. Nieve is so fast, and they call the blocking foul. Yeah, we talked about not only uh, Loria, but Nieves before the game. He's a good one. But Marquise Poole here, he has two guards who can really play the game. Loria, Nieves. I believe Loria is averaging 20 a game with eight assists. So that, you know, those, that's nothing to scoff at. <laughs> Nieves makes both and we're tied at 30. Saved in by Bruton and thrown back to Paul. Getting some help from McDonald. Paul's shot is good. He wanted to take it. He wasn't giving the rock up. 32-30. Worked for a good shot, though. A good shot he took. Nieves. Gloria, we go inside, Rose. Some ball, Romovic. Three pointer is off. As the crowd serenades him with an air ball chant. Seeger, three. No good. Heading out of bounds. And it will be Cayman ball. Boy, that's Seeger. He has some court uh, coverage the way he does it. He gets right to the baseline, he gets to loose balls, uh, jammed the ball before. He's quite an athlete, isn't he? Missed that shot, but I have to give him kudos for the way he plays. Nieves. Nice pass inside. Shot was contested, but Downing will go to the line. Well, the pick, the roll, and the pass. Uh, it's an old schoolyard play, and it comes up big when you uh, need a couple of points. And that's the second foul on Bruton. See if he can make him at the line here. First one is off. So they won't be able to tie it. Just get one point closer. Step by step, inch by inch. Subs come in for Queensboro. Niagara Falls. That's an old Lou Costello routine there. Slowly I turn as Downing hits the free throw. 32-31. <laughs> Four and a half to play in the first. Lou, corner three. No good and rebounded by Rose. Hostos looking to take back the lead. Pass is almost intercepted by Alex Franklin. 
Yeah, I, I, Loria was pointing to him. He says, I should have been over there quicker. I would have had that pass, but we'll see. 19 seconds to shoot. Let's see how they work it here. They're down by one. This has been, uh, as you said, a top-notch ball game. No. And Franklin picks it off that time. Khalil Johnson to Seeger. Seeger to the basket, no good. Downing to Loria. I had a nice chance to talk to Franklin on Alumni Day. Very nice kid. Uh, said, I'll do anything to help this team. Anything I can do. Rose over Lou, no good. Jump ball and it will go to Queensboro. Funny, he had the size advantage over Lou. Didn't try to take it to the basket. I guess he figured Luke can't block my shot. I'll try my chance with this. You're, you're pretty impressed by that, Dave, what I said. When, when, when you talk to a kid like Franklin, yeah. you ask him, what do you want to do here? I'll do anything I can do to help the team. That's good. I like when I hear that. Johnson outside. Seeger no good. And Loria with it. By the way, I think he had some good numbers in high school. I can't track Spin them move, down. Left hand too strong. Franklin and it's turned over and then Downing gets hit in the face by accident. Franklin tried to reach in and came up too high. No malicious intent, but it still didn't look good. And Downing will go to the line. I think you have some gentlemen from some other teams in the crowd here watching this game tonight. I think Queensboro has Manhattan next, don't they? I, I'm not sure. Somebody was telling me that. Downing but. misses the front end of the one and one. Lou going to the basket over Rose and it's good. Of the floater variety there. 34-31 Queensboro. Rose back outside and it was almost knocked away. Downing. Yeah. They call a tie up, although we'll stay with Hostos with 14 on the shot clock. Just before they tied up that ball, Dave, I said it would be big here if Queensboro can spread this lead out a little, get it maybe to eight points. That would be nice. Give yourself a lead to play with, a little bit of a lead. Nieves. Loose ball, Nieves picks it up. And they say backcourt violation. Pushed off to get the ball. Excuse me, they call a foul. Oh, yeah, believe, official right? uh, signaling that he pushed off to get the ball. Yeah. Yep. So first foul on Nieves. Got to be careful here for the Tigers. This could be big here. And careful if you're the Caymans, too. Duke almost lost it. Got it back. And then he's fouled. They had one to give. And you had to find a way to get it cranked down there. They almost lost the ball several times. Franklin going to the basket, and the shot was sent away by Loria. And it's a charge, no basket. Offensive foul. The game seems to be going at a lot faster pace than what we've seen the last few years. It's just. 
a and, quicker and, moving and, game. And the Tigers are able to play at that pace, which is very impressive. They're not overwhelmed by the press. No. Seager to Wu. Step back three. Got it! Edward Lowe. And they say it's a two. Yeah, I spoke about the great Ray Rankis before. That looks like a Ray Rankis player right there. I think it the should way, be 36, the way he 31. did that. Scoreboard <laughs> says 35. And now it says 36. I like Lou. And that was almost turned over. Last touch by Seeger. I think Lou has a spot on this team. He's done a good job when he's been in there. Nice three there. Or two, anyway. Gloria. No, it was for a somebody. three. It was a three. And they got it in. There's a deep three from William. Too deep. Couldn't on save it line, in, though. Yeah. And Hostos will get another chance. To correct myself for the final time. That was a two by Lou. He was right over the line there. But a big shot, nonetheless. Play D here for the duration. Heading out of bounds. Out of reach. Yep. It's going to go back to Queensboro. 117 to go in the first half. And you notice Bruton is sitting on the bench right now getting a nice rest. Last year they couldn't afford to do that. Low kick out. Three pointer. No good. But there's McDonald with the rebound. Lou for three. No good. Another rebound. Seeger lost it on the spin move. They had a few chances to push the lead to eight. We're in the final minute of the first half. Queensboro up 36 31. That's all right. You have to just keep going after Hostos right now. They backed Hostos off a bit, if you notice. Gloria. Gloria with Franklin all over him, and it didn't matter. He has big, 17. Big shot, yeah. He's keeping them in this game. Seeger lost the handle on it, got it back. Kick out. Wu tried to get it to Franklin and does. Got it back to Wu, and Wu is fouled going up for the shot. So Edward Lou goes to the line for two. What do you think? You think Lou's a ball player or what? I think so. Yeah. He was directing that whole sequence there, saying, get the ball out, give me, give me the ball. And uh, that's something the Tigers have not been Johnny on the last few seasons, as we said. You got to play together. You got to play constructively. Lou misses the first. And I am bad luck when I say nice things about a guy. Lou splits the free throws. 37-33, Hostos can hold for the final shot. Now 15 seconds to go in the first half. Who are you getting the ball to here? Uh, well, there's Loria. Yep. Nice pass inside. Marquise Mighty puts it in. Queensboro can beat the clock. And they call a foul, but was it before the buzzer? Oh, that hurts. I, I know Marquise Poole's not happy about that one. Well, everybody's walking off, but there are going to be free throws, and I guess they say free throws at the buzzer. There's no, there's no sense in being at the line because there's going to be no rebound. So, so Duke, I don't know if this is a one and one or this is two, they say this three is, shots. This no, is three. He was all the way out at the sideline. Well, there's a gift from Hostos. That was a gift. They just say two. Oh, boy. Okay. So 39 35, and we'll see if those two points come back to haunt Hostos. You know why that wasn't a three? It's because he wasn't shooting the ball. I, I don't right. know. I guess they say it was right before he went up. He was all the way out there, though. 
Well, it was before the shot, I guess. Yeah. It was as he got the ball. Well, that was a very fun half. Wow. wow. 39-35 Queensboro. We'll see if the second half could be as much fun. Well, the second half is about to begin. Queensboro leading Hostos 39-35. Exciting first half. And they got two free Very points. Very exciting. The they got three points there, yes. But it's going to be a battle. Or as you could say, a uh, Bruton Braha. Well, you see, Seeger had nine points. Bruton had eight. It was a very bound scoring. Lou had five. Franklin and Paul had four apiece. Hostos, it was more of a one-man show as that's knocked out of bounds. Jonathan Loria had 17 in the first half. Loria was outstanding. He really was. Almost turned over. Bruton gets it. Seeger. Long two is no good. Almost rebounded by Fullerton. Here's Loria. Nieves for three. No good. And Fullerton grabs the board. Up ahead. And a good job by Loria to stand in and take the contact. First fell on Jerome Hodges. Not a bad aggressive play, but Gloria did the right thing and stood in there. Early on here, and uh, we saw a, a rip-roaring first half, as you said. And there's a foul. And that's number two on Hodges. She picks him up about 10 seconds apart, and he'll go to the bench. Yeah, you don't want any, anybody to get into foul difficulty. There's no need for it. You have a lot of players. You might as well put them in and out. Rose to the basket, no good. Got his own miss, and then missed again. Sager cutting through a few Caymans. Fullerton shot is good. Jay Fullerton, 41-35 Tigers. Now well, that's the space I was talking about. And Shelby Rose answers right back. Yeah, he, he tried to close it right away. Bruton for three, long. And there's an offensive rebound. Bruton got his man in the air to the basket. No good. And then he got it back. And that time it's good. Third time's a charm for Bruton. It's 43-37. Get the feeling Stephen Bruton has been waiting to play in a game like this. Not too many close games last year. Rose misses, but there's an offensive board. And then it's stripped away. Bruton behind the defense. Pass was a little out in front of him. Seeger, no good. Fullerton, the offensive board. Counted on the foul. Fullerton. Queensboro by eight. And that's the space I wanted them to work out into. And another good follow there to get the bucket for Fullerton. Misses the free throw, no three point play. Hostos kind of rushed that possession. Yeah, the Tigers have thrown them out of their uh, rhythm. Yeah. And uh, they've uh, made it a uh, one-man show for Hostos pretty much. And uh, about four or five different Tigers have stepped up in the meantime. <laughs> have to wipe a wet spot on the floor. Better make sure they get that done because you have players out here you haven't had for a few seasons and Carl does not want to lose any of them. Not right now. They are playing the best game they played in about three years. 
And one of the biggest, by the way, right off the be beginning yeah. of the season, a, ga a home game that you need to win. Of course, they're going to play them later at Hostos in the year. And, you know, that's going to be a tough game. And they're 0-3 in CUNY right now. You don't want it to get out of hand. Oh, but now you have some home games. you gotta, yeah. you got to sweep them up. Maybe a young team has a little trouble winning on the road at first. Yeah, they get, yeah, LaGuardia, BMCC, and Kingsboro still have to come in here. All right. And if those games are as good as this, it's going to be a good season. <laughs> what did I do? Jay Fullerton for a off the ball foul. What did I do? I didn't do nothing. When they blew the whistle, I wasn't sure if it was a three second or an actual foul, but they do call Fullerton. And it's nice, you know, if this was a year or two ago, a guy like Shelby Rose, 24 for Hostos, he would just come in here and have 25 points because they would have nobody over 6'1 to defend him. No, they, they look at Fullerton. Big leg, strong legs. They, and Loria way off on tough that. Tough guy. Day. He's a tough guy, Fullerton. Bruton was fouled, and he'll go to the line for two. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, Bruton looks extra quick tonight. He looks rootin' tootin', does Bruton. Leading the Tigers with 10 points. He's been waiting to have some help in a big game. I'm going to go ask him that later. If, if they do succeed in this game, He's still, he's leading the team in points. He's playing fine, but I know, but it, he doesn't it, have to be the right. guy. I'm going to go ask him later if they are successful in this game. Steve, how, how good does it feel to have like four or five guys out there playing with you? Bruton has 12, and Queensboro leads by 10, 47-37. And before the game, of course, when you see him, he has the spectacles on. Yes. Bruton wears okay. glasses when he's off the court. Rose to Nieves. Gloria asking for it. Gets it. Three-pointer is good. He has 20. He's keeping them in the game. Yeah, he's not going to go away at any time. And he was asking for it. Somehow Queensboro forgot about him. Bruton. Oh, oh. I think that they, they kind of wanted yeah. an alley-oop. Yeah. That was, was too, too, too alley. It never ooped. You know, it never ooped, Dave. A Queensboro timeout. Yeah, Carl's not happy with saying that we one. don't need that. Because hey, he made it coming out of like a blind area, and then he tried to throw the pass, and uh, no direction on it. Wants to make All sure right. they don't... Uh, Start to have a little slippage and let Hostos back in the game. You could lapse, yes. Not a bad game, though, for everyone involved. And uh, Bruton leading the way with 13. Seeger with 9. And Fullerton has played some big minutes. Lou came on earlier. He had five points, hit the outside shot. So Queensboro's had a little of everything. And they've really outplayed Hostos for the most part. Hostos has been a one-two man game to this point. And, and really won. And Laurie is a terrific player. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Marquise Poole. I said, do you have any players that are considered tops in the conference? And he mentioned that young man, 20 points a game and what is a, about eight assists. I guess you're pretty good. Yeah. I guess you're pretty good. They would be in a lot of trouble if it wasn't for him. Yeah, I would say points. so. I would say so. I feel like Queensboro doesn't want to double him and give other guys easy luck. So they're why? To, why? Why do that? You know, let him do his damage and then tighten up on him and uh, keep everybody else off. Because it does keep them unbalanced, the uh, hostos. Flipped on the floor. Seeger threw it up to Tyler Hodges, who almost realized it too late. But he went up in the air and put it in, 49-40. It was a 
floater, no good. And that's turned over, Nieves. He's gonna try to go all the way, and does. I don't know how he was able to split the two defenders and then put it in like that. This is Nieves. Impressive move, 49-42. Bruton from downtown, no good. Fullerton is there with the putback. They haven't had an answer for him. 15 minutes to go, 51-42. Nice pass by Smith, Rose with the finish, 51-44. And Jamal Smith, one of the top players, as Bruton misses another three. Smith didn't play in the first half. No, he didn't play at all. Ramavic puts it in. <laughs> Almost looks like that timeout helped uh, Hosto settle down a little bit. In fact, uh, correct me, I think maybe I'm wrong. I think Smith is the guy who was averaging the 20 and yeah. the eight assists, not Loria. Loria is a terrific player, but it was Smith who had those averages coming in. And they've done basically well without him, and now it's his first entry into the game. You're right, you're right. You know, I didn't see a number five on the court, and I know Marquise was telling me about number five, but I said, well, maybe he was talking about number two. <laughs> no, he was talking about you number, didn't five. See number five. Right. It's like, well. Right. But that kid, number five, has registered 20 points per game and about eight assists. So he comes in the game. This could become a different game now, David. Look at the quickness he has all the way to the basket, although he misses. Queensboro the other way. And then it's turned over. Fired the pass, the fake. Rose puts it in. All of a sudden, it's 51-48. It's a run now, it's a yep. run. Carl is not gonna take a timeout, though. He's gonna let them go. He was going to take a timeout. He said, forget about it. He goes, I just took one. At some point, they have to get through it themselves. Hodges. Tyler Hodges with the much needed basket. Stopping the hostos run, at least momentarily. He's a smooth player, Hodges. 53-48. Gloria. Okigu's shot is off. And Tyler Hodges to Paul. Seeger going to the basket. Dumps it off to Tyler Hodges. It's no good. Tipped. And Hostos has it. Ahead. Loria, nice bounce pass from Rose. Was fouled. He got ball, but he also got a, a bit of Rose. Well, it, it's, it's really understandable to, to think that maybe Loria averages a lot of assists a game, too, because he's a terrific passer as well as a scorer. So what Marquise was telling me, he has tremendous guards, he really does. Rose off on the first. He has three different guards who can hurt you. But Rose missed the first shot. And it stays a five point game. Let's see if he gets this one. And Rose misses both. I think that person screaming in the front row threw him off there. <laughs> Paul directing traffic. Gloria got the hand on the pass. Well, you know, this Tiger Gym isn't the biggest place in the world, so when you get a crowd in here making noise, it really rumbles a little bit. Paul. Oh. Queensboro will keep it with eight on the clock. He got himself in a lot of trouble there, but he's gonna keep the ball. Paul said, where's my help? And I think you have to get good shots now, David. No time to be forcing things. Hodges is called for traveling. He felt the pressure with the shot clock running down. Yeah, he had nervous feet checking the ball in. 12 and a half minutes to play. Queensboro nursing a five-point lead. 
I'd, I'd have to think that uh, Smith has some kind of injury because he had him in, now he has him out real quick. Gloria thought about the three. Dump off from Mavic. Rose. Rose backing down Hodges. His shot off glass, no good. There's an offensive board. But Mavic has it sent away. Kay McDonald back in for Queensboro. Gloria, corner three, air ball. And then traveling is called on Okigu. Now, well, we're not seeing Smith again, so uh, like I said, there must be some problem with him that he's not playing a big number of minutes in this game. As Marquise goes to his bench and brings in number one again instead. McDonald being guarded by Nieves. Fullerton, no good. McDonald flies him for the offensive board. McDonald inside, no good. Coach Amengo wanted a foul call, thought there was a little contact. Nieves, tough shot, and it's no good and hauled in by Fullerton. Seeger, nice dribbling, and then not nice dribbling. Nieves pushing it. Oh my God, counted and the foul. Posterized. Woo. As a hostos uh, cheering section started freaking out. I think everybody started freaking out. My God. All right, all right. This went right have, over him. Yeah, well, you have to remember, though, that's not the game. I mean, that, that was a terrific play. Not nothing either. Terrific Whoa. play, but if you're Queensboro, you have to say, hey, that was one play, man. We got we to gotta finish this game here. Wow. And because they made the announcement that you can't run on the court, it was funny to see the dunk and then everybody in the bleachers started running to the top of the bleachers. Well, well remember, the game goes to the team that scores the most points. That only not, counts as two, you're right. Not the prettiest or high flyingest. That was beautiful. <laughs> can't deny. But not just that, he posterized him. He did it from so far out. Well, that looked Jordan-esque right there. That's how it wow. looked. And every kid that comes wow. up playing it. That's why these kids are going crazy. Because every kid coming up since Michael Jordan dreams of making a move like that in a game. That's Everyone. The crowd is still buzzing. Yes. But now we have to wait as they wipe off a wet spot by the hostos bench. See, I want to see the game action resume, like, you know, right after that great play. So we have to wait for them to wash down a wet spot. Queensboro was still yeah, winning, because, by the way. Because they got so excited, they all started jumping on the court yeah. and perspiring on the court. <laughs> Maybe somebody spilled a drink. I don't know. Or spilled water or, yeah, or uh, a high-energy drink. Wow. So they have to make sure nobody slips down there. You could get really injured. Now, this might benefit the Tigers a little, but give them a little time to settle down, too. We'll see. I know it gives Carl a chance to make a couple of changes out there. And now uh, Nieves tries to finish the conventional three-point play. And does. He had to make the free throw after that, didn't he? Yeah, I know. You, you have to lock in then and make the free throw. And there's a turnover, so maybe uh, maybe the delay didn't help Queensboro. See, this is uh, this is the young man's psyche. If basketball is just who made the greatest move tonight, then you got to work on it. Right? <laughs> but 
I could see where a young man would be impressed with that because I've seen it firsthand myself when I played in the park. I've had guys, I've played, and I've had guys jam the ball over my head, and then we stayed in the game and we played real hard, and they lost. At least you admit you were the guy who was posterized. Yeah, I was, I was, but my, me and my friend who are older stayed in the game, kept playing, and we won the game. Well, See? that's what Queens brought, you know, and that's what Carl has to do. Hey, that, that's a great play. It happened, it happened. It's not a 10 point dunk. Right. <laughs> It's a hell of a highlight, but it's not a 10-point dunk. It'd be nice if they had a 10-point dunk, but they don't. <laughs> and they they did, were, that but they're really it. fired up on the Hosto side. Now, that play got them all juiced up, and it's going uh, to be a tough one from here on in. In the Hosto cheering section. And the Tigers just have to settle down and do the right things now. They can't do things trying to outdo hostos, just play the game. Even the Queensboro chairing section is buzzing. You have to recognize a good play, but now the play continues, 11 minutes to go. Queensboro leads 53-51. Kick out, Armave going inside. Well, floater is good and we're tied at 53. Now some pressure and another turnover. Bounce pass to Nieves. And a good job to go straight up and not foul. Queensboro the other way. Sager is fouled. And I'll tell you, David, the young Tigers, but the talented Tigers, can show themselves something right here. You got to come back. Got to come back. First one is good. This might be what the biggest three or four minutes they've yeah. had all year. Hey, Sager has 10 points now. Joining Bruton in double figures. Makes both, 55-53. Way downtown. That's, that's okay if you're Steph Curry. That's, that's a little bit much, and there's a move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it go. to Fullerton, and Fullerton is fouled from behind. Make plays. Jeez, Make I, I don't plays. remember so many highlight dribbles and dunks in one game. You've got to be a competitor. You, if you're going to play this game, you've got to be a competitor. Forget about the other stuff. Oh, I made a fancy move. That's nice, but we're going to win this game. Hats off to you, my friend, but we're going to win this game anyway. See, uh, and Fullerton we'll got the shaken out up here. there. If Fullerton, Fullerton goes to the bench. He got a little bit of a cut over the eye, I think. Christina Some, Kavanaugh, the trainer, yeah, had a perfect game going, and then an now we have an in-game injury. And we've been held up for the last uh, two or three minutes. I'm I'm trying to see. Uh, it looks like he has an ice pack on his head. I think he got a cut over the eye, and they will not allow him back in the game if that continues to bleed. So they got to try to patch that up. They have or to maybe try to patch. Also. They have to try to patch that up right now before he can enter the game again. Now, I don't know how much time they get, but it's a normal timeout. They're not going to wait 10 minutes for him to get back on the court. Pretty funny, huh? It was uh, going all the Tigers' way until that Nieves dunk, pretty much. Uh, and the comeback had already started because it was a 10-point game. For and a then couple was, of minutes, yeah. But that really totally that got really the back in it. Unbalanced everything. I mean, it's one thing to posterize somebody, but to do it from as far out as he did. I'm not over it yet. I'm sorry, Joe. I know, you know. You talked about for like three minutes how the Tigers have to move on and then I keep well, going back to it. 
Obviously, you're going to allow them as much time as they need over there to work on. Uh, well, he has to shoot the free throws. Too. On his eye, but I thought that they would require them to put somebody at the line for him at this point. And by the way, they, they will not allow him back on the court if that bleeding does not stop. So I, I believe the officials are now getting it together that somebody's going to have to get up there and shoot the free throws here. Yeah, not sure. We'll see what happens. Tigers up now, 55 -53. I don't know. They might, they might let Hostos select who they want at the line, and let's see if they do that. That might be their choice right now. You got to get those blood stains off the floor too. You don't want it to look like the War Memorial Coliseum, you know. <laughs> All right, he's going to blow his whistle and say, "Let's get back to business here, guys." Uh, and they asked Marquise Pool, "Who do you want to go to the line yeah. for Queensboro?" Well, we'll see how they do this. They're still wiping. Uh Still wiping the floor for blood. Uh, taxi, we'll be right out. I know it's $107, but we'll be right <laughs> out. Oh, we should share a cab. Now you're thinking. <laughs> it's still 50 a piece. I, I can't afford that. I'm, I'm not a luxury liver like you. <laughs> The athletic director getting involved in the uh, cleanup out there also. Pete Marchitello probably not missing uh, the AD duties right now. Not right now. No. Or a lot of other times. By the way, the new AD is a, a wonderful guy. Yes, yes. And Pete told me, and he's better looking than me. I said, Pete, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> You're fine looking to me. Don't worry about it. They're going to have Lou shoot the free throws. And now, if I'm picking it, I'm a hostos. Maybe I don't want Lou now, shooting the free throws. I don't know. Host, was hostos the one yeah. who picked? I have no I idea. Know. I have no idea. I guess the Tigers get to select yeah, their we'll free throw the shooter. See, if yeah. we were on the court, we might hear that conversation. Yeah. But then we wouldn't see yeah. over everybody standing up, which has happened, as Lou makes both. 57-53. Well, we're back underway after about a, I'd say about a 15-minute delay there. I'd say it was 15. For good reason, by the way. That kid is still bleeding over there, and he's hurt. And Smith is back in for Hostos, well rested. And there's Ramovic. 57-55, under 10 minutes to play. Franklin, the spin move. Outside, Bruton thought about the three, gives it to Lou. Back out to Bruton, who will reset. Kick out, Lou, corner three, no good. And Loria up high for the rebound. That was a good shot by Lou. There was nothing wrong with that. He had the open look Smith and he took it. Smith from way downtown. And too far away and it was short. And now a three on two. And there's a basket by Franklin. Glad to fight off a little contact too. He's a gamer, that Franklin. Tigers by four. Smith making his move all the way to the basket and puts it in with the left hand. Wow. Made it look easy. He made it look simple and he did it beautifully. There's a shot from Hodges, no good. Gloria. Good job. You, you have to stop the ball right there. And uh, and Franklin got in there enough to disrupt him in dribbling that ball up. When they start that break, you have to stop the ball, Dave. You can't let them get all the way to the basket. So good job. They turned it over.
that's my uh, that's my guy Franklin again doing a big thing. See, blue, Gloria on him. Good ball denial inside, tipped and turned over. Ramavic going all the way to the basket and laying it in with the right hand. And this game is tied at 59. Tigers looking to take the lead back. Hodges, no good. Rose hauls in the rebound. Smith. Loria from downtown, no good. And Rose with another rebound. Here's a three pointer, no good. Loria, out of bounds. By the way, that Rose has played a big game yeah. for, uh, for Hostos. He's been on loose balls, he's been on rebounds, he scored some points. He's done a, a marvelous job for them. Well, this is a ball game, Dave. This, this is a good one. And then a foul. Uh, Flint, and, and he's saying that uh, Franklin pushed off with the hand as he was bringing it up. And he might have had a case there, by the way, but they got him for the foul. Well, it'll be free throws from here on out for both teams. Both have committed you know, six fouls. I did fouls. see Franklin's hand move a little bit to shove him up, but it was after the foul, I think. McDonald go inside. Franklin bounce pass to Bruton, and Bruton is fouled. He got hit enough by Nieves. It's another foul on Nieves, by the way. And you wouldn't mind getting him in foul difficulty. He has four now. I think they're going to have to take him out of the game. Yeah, decision time for Marquis Poole. But he does have number five back in, his other big guard, so. McDonald to the bench for Queensboro. Nieves to the bench for Hostos. Number five is Smith, right? Yes. I, I don't think he's feeling well tonight because he doesn't even look and he still had he a looks like he's struggling guys. a little yeah. but he made a beautiful play before Bruton misses the front end of a one and one seven and a half minutes to play we're all tied at 59 and we'll see if Fullerton could go back in also because Rose has been doing well rebounding Ramavic Gives Hostos a 61-59 lead. Terrific move there. They haven't had any answer since Fullerton went out. He's also played a big role for stepping up now for Hostos. Bruton to Seeger. Seeger had his shot altered. Up ahead to Rose. Loria fit it in there. Rose finishes off glass. Wasn't an easy shot. 63-59, an eight nothing run for the Caymans. Seeger, Tigers need a basket, and a miscommunication between yeah, him and Bruton. I or thought, maybe it was just I thought maybe mark. that ball was deflected, but it wasn't. Yeah, that's what I thought might have happened, but it was not. Time out here. They're saying reset the shot clock. Well, that's okay. Now, the Tigers have been leading for most of the game after the first uh, 10 minutes, I'd say. And Hostos calls timeout. They're on an 8 nothing run. That timeout could help Queensboro. We'll see how it goes with 6.40 to go. And it may give Fullerton some more time to rest. Gives the Tigers a little chance to settle down. They're still in this game. Now they've got to figure out a way to win it. Uh, and they have enough guys out there to do it, so uh, let's see if they can pull it off. Already much more interesting than it was last year, though. <laughs> or in the first part of this doubleheader. True. All right, they got him patched up, and he's going to be able to return to the lineup now. Yeah. Well. 
And, uh, that, and, he believe me. and he has a different jersey, so Fullerton is now wearing 44. And believe me, he's a big loss. Did you see how that middle opened up for Hostos after he left the game? He's not going to return right away anyway. Yeah, he's still probably feeling a little woozy. So I guess there was some blood on the jersey, so he's wearing 44 instead of 23. He could tell because of the green socks also. Well, it's good to see uh, he's okay, though, and they stopped that bleeding at least. Yeah, he is wearing those green socks yeah. that stand out. Uh, that stands out in the fact that he's much larger down than everybody the main else. Down the Main Street, you could see those. <laughs> Hostos looking to extend the lead. Here's Smith. Nice pass and then the fake. Nice move by Okigu. And it's 65-59. All of a sudden, a 10-0 run. Hodges tried to put it in off glass. No good. And now Smith is running the show here. Ten points in a row for the Caymans. Six minutes to go, Hostos up six. Gloria. They go back out there, down to five on the shot clock. Smith is gonna have to throw up from way downtown. No good. And Seeger with the rebound. What a smart player. He got behind that pick to deliver the shot. Seeger, no good. Hodges got it. And his shot is short. Tyler Hodges was right there, but it was contested. And Rose, the defense forgot about him. Can't have that happen. And a 12 nothing run. And all of a sudden, Queensboro was down by eight with 5.20 to go. Franklin. Bruton. Kick out, three pointer. It's good. Jerome Hodges from downtown. Big pressure shot. But Rose goes right down the other end and puts it in off glass. He can really get up the court. And he has several times tonight. And it's 69-62. 4.45 to go. If you ask me who's been there most back, well, And Smith came right go. in with the steal and the layup. I don't know what Coach Poole said in that huddle, but it sure worked. If you ask me who's been their star uh, in the second half, I'd pick that kid Rose. Rooting along to. Don't forget about Smith either. Well, he's made a big entry into the game, obviously. And I was going to say, it doesn't matter who Hostos puts out there, you're gonna win the game, even if he's not playing. Seeger takes it away and then it was almost stolen back. Bruton has it for Queensboro. Seeger for three. Yes! Seeger from downtown. 71 67. And Rose counted on the foul. How does that happen again and again and again? They cannot get back and stop him. And he has done that. That's why wow. I said, I think he's been the most valuable wow. player in the second half for them. Fool me Especially once. when number 44 went out for the Tigers. Fool me one, shame on you. Fool me twice. Fool me four times. Shame on Queensboro. I mean, Rose just kept going behind the defense. They had no answer. And now a bunch of new Tigers come in, although not Fullerton. Well, you see, veteran players know that he's done that about five times, and you've got to get back. You've it looks got like to be one back. of the games last year where they don't have the answer for the big guy, and he could just keep laying it in. And he runs the court, though. He uh... And Rose, even though he missed, he has 17 points. And you're still not out of this game. You gotta make no. some plays here. Queensboro still in it. Left-handed. And Miller is fouled and will go to the line for two. So we'll change the script a little bit. We're looking for a Tiger heart and soul comeback here. Miller makes the first. 
You know, maybe those two points Queensboro got at the end of the first half could loom large. Very valuable. Miller short on the second. 73-68. And now if you're host host, do you run a little clock? I think they're going to use as much as they can right now. Because the danger is getting too conservative and taking your foot off the pedal. Gloria. They go inside and a foul before the shot. No basket. Foul on the floor. Good call. And Rose will go to the line for a one and one. You see, David, they're trying to chop the Tigers up right now. Run people in and out. Get open looks. Get them downstairs and uh, put this game away. Rose makes it first. I'll tell you, it's been even the whole way with the exception of that one little 12-0 run they had. And that could be the difference. And then that injury, and this yes. guy is taken over right here. This guy right at the line here. And that 12-0 run right after the injury. Rose splits the free throw. 74-68, 3.15 to go. Paul. Inside Miller. It's good. 74-70, three minutes to go. Two big buckets by Miller. Or a free throw in a bucket. Here's Smith, playmaker. Rose comes up to help. Smith, kick out, Ramovic a three. No good. Rose, the offensive board. And he's feeling it. He could have passed outside and he just took it himself and it's 76-70. Khalil Johnson, back to Paul. Two and a half minutes to play. Not over yet. Paul. Paul, kick out. Duke, shot, good. 76-72. Two ten to go. Well, you, you, you gotta play D right here. This is where you gotta stop them right here. Two minutes to go. Kamovic, Rose, and he threw it to Duke. Duke the other way, and he is fouled. And now to see if it's a one and one or two shots. It's a big call. It's been one terrific ball game here tonight. It's been a terrific game. It's a one and one. Got to make both of these free throws. Yeah, they're going to bring him back in now. No. They have uh, yeah, okayed him back in. I mean, he was like a a sturdy guy in there. He was banging around. We see what Rose did in the five minutes that Fullerton was out. First one is no good. And that one hurts, but now Queensboro needs to stop. Gloria, 100 seconds to go. Hostos up by four, and they have the ball. Rose, no good, and Bruton with the rebound. 125 to go. Paul, in the lane, lost it, but they call a foul. This guy Fullerton has been like the biggest player they've had here, strongest guy yeah. since that guy Steely, who brought them all the way to the final back uh, in, uh, I think it was, uh, oh, yeah, it was 07. 07, he brought them all the way. They weren't that good a team, but he, he was good. That's no good wow. by uh, Paul. Got to make him. Tough to uh, miss free throws at this point, uh, but these are pressure free throws. He can get this one. They're a three-pointer away, though. And he makes it. 76-73. 120 to go. Smith being guarded by Johnson. Side Gloria thought about the three. Works for a better shot, but it's no good. The offensive board, Ramovic, no good, Rose, 
the rebound and the putback. And then a steal, and Moria counted, and the foul. And maybe a dagger. Hey, worried about getting that ball up court and uh, and uh, Loria playing incognito there. They didn't see him, and he just snuck in and took the ball away. Uh, my eyes were going up court, and all of a sudden he had the ball and he was uh, at the basket. But, you know, this Rose, player of the game for Hostos. He's played a big game. Loria with 23 points, overtaking Rose, who actually had the team lead with 22. But I'll give it to him because he really led the uh, spearheaded this charge here in the second half. Queensboro's without the big guy, they've had nobody to stop him at all. And he's gotten, he's gotten some easy baskets, he's made some big plays, he's gotten some rebounds, he's done it in so many ways. Not over yet, but very close. They need a basket here. It doesn't have to be a three. I would go. I would try one though, because if, you know you're still you're eight but any, points down. But anything down makes now. it a two possession yeah. game, I should say. You're eight points down now. Whether it's a two or a three, they need a basket here. Oh yeah, right. If they get a two, it's eighty-one seventy-five. So you're couple of baskets away. Right. Then you need two threes. If you get a three, you're down by five. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, Dave. You're right. You could go either way. You could go with the twos. Or they could just get two four-point plays. All right, 55.9 seconds. One thing they have to do, they have to get the ball in bounds. And Hostos, the coach is telling them to back up. They need to go fast. Smith almost stole it. And there's a steal. Gloria. They don't need to shoot. But Rose will put it in anyway, just to be safe. Now, you know, Rose has scored a lot of points. He actually has 24, he leads the team. And these guys, these guards have made it very tough over the last four minutes, coming in and jutting in and going after the ball, going in and jutting after the ball. So they in unison have really contributed, all of them. Hostos with the last seven points. Paul, 83-75, and now they have to foul. They don't have time for this. Nieves, no good. I have no idea why I even shot. And so Queensboro still alive. Sager for three, no good. And that, that'll do it. 83-75. Say that's gotta be one of the three best men's games that I've seen in about six or seven years. Absolutely. And a, a good win for, uh, for Hostos, trailing virtually all the way in this game, all the way just about, till they put on that surge. Bruton, no good, and that'll do it. Well, Hostos outscored them 48-36 in the second half, and it was that 12-0 run after Fullerton went out. I would no have liked to Rose. see him stay in the game and I would have liked to see what the outcome would have been, but that didn't happen. And then Hostos, of course, played without Smith for a, a good half and that had an effect on the game. But like I said, no matter who you have on the court, you gotta win the game and the they didn't win. Yeah, lost seven in a row now, 0-4 in CUNY, but it doesn't feel like last year. No, no. I think they'll have they'll have some good wins ahead for this team. As Bill Parcells said, you are what your record says you are, but I still think there's a reason for optimism for the Tigers. They really battled hard tonight, and I think Hostos had you know, a little more experience. We'll say that. They have players returning from last year when they were number one in the conference, so you can't downplay that. Highlight plays on each side. It was an exciting game. Exciting. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Well, 
Thanks for watching. For Joe Massey, this is QCC alum David Russell. The final score, Hostos 83, Queensboro 75.